It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Man, this uh, past week, kind of posting about these guys right here, my wheel issues, my expandable drum issues. Uh, I really feel like after talking with a bunch of different people now that these wheels have a high chance of being defective from the manufacturer, just bad. Uh, I've gotten a number of emails from people, a bunch of comments, and that's just something to maybe be uh, aware of. It's probably not your machine, most likely, from what I can tell. Most likely, it's the wheel. If you're spinning a wheel at close to its max rated RPM, uh, you know, these are rated for 1800 and I spin at 1750, which that's common speed for motors. They should be expanding. They should be holding your belts. Otherwise, I think, uh, man, maybe it's a uh, time for some better wheels. Like the, the, the wheels that I got for the Arbor are significantly better. I mean, it's really a day and night difference. He starts, I wish I had a durometer to be able to show you how soft one is and how hard the other is, but something to factor in. A lot of interesting and creative ideas that different people had for maybe fixing these, uh, some of which I might try for fun. One person was like, oh, what about cutting these slits bigger? That's a possibility. I don't know how I'd get all the way in there to like kind of do that. People talked about different rubber conditioners, which that could be another interesting thing to potentially explore as well. There's a lot of stuff that we can maybe look into to see if we could do something with these. Um, that said, uh, I do have other projects that will be involving these wheels. So not all is lost, but you know, it's a learning experience, you know, um, that's kind of what I like to do here on the channel is share some of the things that I have learned over the months and years, and we can, we can chat about them, you know? One thing that I have been uh, working on lately has been doing more guitar picks. If you saw the guitar pick video, I thought it came out pretty well. We have some more ready to go here. Extra little thin ones. I might be making these uh, and giving, giving some of them away in the future. Kind of nice. Pretty thin. These guys. I think these ones will clean up uh, quite nice. It is kind of a rough, a rather rough polish on them. You can kind of see right there. Not really polished at all. I mean, it was, <laughs> uh, it's just kind of rough off of uh, the Richardsons. And uh, we will fully clean these guys up in the future. So that should be another fun project. <clears throat> Before we kind of get into the meat of this evening's discussion, I would like to give a shout out to my buddy Patrick. Patrick, uh, Patrick and his wife made a very interesting video. I'm going to drop a link down in the description box to it. Go check it out when you're done with this video or just pause it, but make sure you come back here. <laughs> uh, Patrick uh, made a video kind of about all of the online rock hounding creators and uh it's very excellent i don't want to spoil it but i would suggest you go watch it i thought it was quite good you know my the the bar uh my 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 threshold for what i'm impressed by is quite high you know um i'm not easily impressed i'm not the type of person that's uh you know slapping their cheeks and uh saying wow we every nine seconds but uh, I was impressed by this. Very impressed. So go check that out. Well, I was thinking we could talk a little bit this evening about this guy. Okay, so this is, a th <laughs> this is like not even in frame. This is my microscope. This is my uh, trinocular microscope that you've, uh, maybe you've seen some of the videos of me using this, but it is also what I use for taking my photos. Photos of lovely material such as that little guy. <laughs> and this little guy. 
And we're going to talk a little bit... Look at that. Can you even see that? That little purple splotch right there is what we're talking about. So, there is a whole world of macro photography. And when it comes down to the, you know, taking these pictures, it is not easy, right? Like, it's not easy. We're going to get kind of into it a little bit. So this is a trinocular microscope. So your two eyes look there and I can put a camera up here. That's really important. Um, this thing also, the head goes up and down so that we can actually put, we can put like a really large item under this. Um, and that's how I do a lot of my observations. Um, I do have some more interesting gear for taking some of the photos, which we'll uh, look at here shortly. And this is a critical tool. Now, we need to talk a little bit about magnification because the magnification is a really hard topic. It's very deceptive. You know, I've tried all of the digital microscopes at this point, and they're all kind of a, I don't want to say they're a scam, but they're, they just really, really mislead people. You know, they say stuff like, thousand power, uh, 1500 magnification, and it's all a lie. Because what it doesn't take, it, it's not, a, how to say it, it's maybe not a lie, but it lacks the nuance of resolution. See, I can take this video you're watching right here, and I can zoom in 500x, and you are not necessarily seeing anything, <laughs> but it doesn't look better. We zoom in a thousand X, right? You're not seeing more. Like it is not helpful, you know? Uh, there's some great charts on what you can kind of see at what magnifications, you know, like seeing bacteria and cells and blood and just like all the things, uh, microorganisms. I mean, if something, if you had a digital microscope that costs 30 bucks, right? Think of it like an entry level into other setups, you know, things that can provide magnification plus resolution. Most of the things that I look at under the microscope and take photos of, I'm really in the 10 to maybe 80 power magnification. Uh, this goes three and a half X to 180. But once you start to get uh, those higher powers, um, we start to lose resolution. And part of that is lighting. But this is a, a really critical piece for learning about minerals. And uh, what I'm using right now for the camera for it is this. This is a Canon 70D. <clears throat> and this goes in the trinocular port up here. And that is how I set up to take my photos. You can't even see that. So this is how I set up to take my photos. Now, I'm not actually like pressing the button. I have a wireless remote for the shutter. So I will take a mineral such as this. You know, this would have a light. Um, and we would probably move this guy up because there is something new in my life. And uh, we'll show that here shortly. Down here at the bottom, there's this disc that pops out. And this is just kind of like a black and white disc. So you would put your uh, specimen there. And typically, I would use this and I would drop the head. And as it, I did that, I would be taking photos of the stack, the, the, what, the narrow range of the focus depth, OK? But. I now have this guy. Ooh, very happy with this. So the way this guy works, I take that ring out. This guy falls in right there. I can place my mineral on the stage and I can turn these and it very, 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 very slowly goes up. So I have a throw of 10 millimeters and I can take some very, very, very fine photos with this. And uh, let's look at a couple of those photos right now. So the first photo you're looking at, I believe that was a image stack of 133 photos. And I think it has came out quite well. Um, for being a more fibrous 
mineral. It is a tough one for me to, uh, have, have, those have been tough for me to picture with this system. And this is by no means the ultimate system. People, there's always room for improvement with this stuff. But you're not able to see something this small, you know, and we're only looking at a tiny portion of it under the microscope here. You're not able to produce photos like with your phone or uh, a digital setup the same way you can with a microscope, with a DSLR and doing image stacking. So I take like, you know, 130 photos at various focal lengths and then uh, software stitches them all together and we're able to produce these photos. Of course, having good material matters a lot. You, you Things with nice contrast, nice structure, things that are on black host rock that are purple are a great example of, of a setup that you have the best setup in the world, but if you don't have the best stuff to take photos of, well, you're kind of out of luck, aren't you? Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, that kind of covers my current setup. Obviously, I don't have my lights on out here, like or my lights are left up in the office, but this is kind of where I'm going with it right now. Um, the microscope is from Amscope. It's, um, it's a quality microscope. They really range in price based upon a whole bunch of different features, and they don't even like label the... <laughs> the microscopes like but i'll drop a link down uh below to it um but i think i wish i had gotten a microscope sooner these are incredibly valuable right as far as learning about rocks and minerals it kind of is a critical tool that a person should start to think about getting if you really want to be uh highly knowledgeable about the world of rocks and minerals because you simply can't beat it you know it's not something you can just uh replace with ease so something to uh factor in this this device here um it's actually on a ring that i cut out of an old cutting board and this uh can turn in the x y and z uh ranges of travel the axis so very handy uh to have to do ultra fine adjustments what else? What else about it? Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. I've had a bunch of questions lately, and uh, I thought I would uh, that I would share. Um, I do have some additional things that I would like to figure out with this and work around. But man, um, as far as learning about minerals, it's it's uh, such a game changer. I don't want to run down the digitals. I know for a lot of people, they are the budget friendly option. But what I would say is look into other options. Almost everybody has a really, really good phone. And a better option is to have a jeweler's loop and just hold it in front of the lens of your phone. Take a picture, right? And then zoom in some on your phone. That will be that will get you better results than like any digital microscope, uh, like period. You know, often I think what where people get confused by this is if you're looking at a video of somebody using a digital microscope on your phone on YouTube, like you have this like let's say your your screen's that big, or maybe you're looking at it the other way and it's that big. Uh, Everything is compressed so much that like a lot of the blurriness is really um, the pixels are compressed down so it can appear to be sharper than what it actually is. But if you're trying to use these as a means to take photos or use high resolution to be able to identify, you got to go optical. Optical is, is, is king, you know, glass. You got to have glass. Well... That's about all I have for you this week. Thanks for coming by, hanging out with me in the shop. I appreciate you guys. And uh, stay tuned. I have some good videos coming this week. And uh, I'll leave this one here. Take care.